good bit of the show. Well, they're all good bits, by the way. Uh, the return of token young person, Faith Godi Bazos. Uh, she's a conservative, devoutly Christian, a woman who is... She's only 14 years old, but she rocks the casbah and is probably taking drugs and smashing police cars uh, at the weekend. How are you? I'm well, doing yeah. nothing of the sort, going to church and reading the newspapers. Going to church and reading the newspapers? Yes, in that order. Now, token young person we call you, because you are... How old are you, 20? 22. 22, As okay. of June. Um, do you take drugs? Are you promiscuous? And did you vote? No, no, yes. What did you vote for? Who what, did you vote who for? Who did I vote yeah. for? Uh, the Tim Hudak gang. In my writing, it was Christine McGurr. Unfortunately, she lost. What's your writing? Uh, St. Paul's. Oh, you might as well vote for the cat, for goodness <laughs> sake. I mean, that, you know, the Tories are going to win that. No, never. However, Eglinton Lawrence, it, during the federal election, did turn blue. So there was some hope for a Rocco Rossi up there. And I was hoping we'd kind of sweep south eventually. But no, Toronto Centre is a bad influence. Rocco Rossi w was smashed in the Ontario election, partly yes. because he was in charge of the Liberal Party. Yes. He became a progressive conservative. And mm -hmm. Liberals, who would have been indifferent, were in their campaigning against him. But his politics, I mean, he's not a conservative like you are. Uh, He's a pretend no. conservative. I don't know about pretend conservative. I've had quite a few conversations with Rocco, and I'd like to think that he's seen the light. Really? Did he tell you about his pilgrimage? No. You must be the only person. Now, the, 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 <laughs> the turnout was incredibly low there in Ontario. And for yes. those watching outside of Ontario, forgive us, but this is pretty typical for Canada. It was under 50%. The majority of people in Ontario said, I don't care. And I suspect a lot of those were young people. Yes, actually. Uh, it's an observed trend among all industrial countries, low voter turnouts, while Canada is no exception. Yeah. Here in Ontario, less than 50%, while the youth are continually isolating themselves from the vote. There's a lot of questions, essentially, Who's not voting and why aren't they voting? Like I said, the youth, I mean, in the past decade, we've seen numbers less than 25% of eligible young voters between 18, 24, 29. Mm -hmm. not, are, are, uh, less than 25% are the ones who are voting. Does that surprise you? Does it surprise me? Yes, because being the person that I am, I love voting. I love exercising my, my, my right to vote. Mm. And I care about my future. Um, Yes. No, you so, don't, but young people don't care about their future because you're, you're immortal until you reach the age of... It's when you start seeing people you knew who die. Yes. And, uh, and your children grow up a little and you realise, my golly, I'm going to die one day. And then that terrible time when you... When you oh, I've lived most of my life. Unless I'm going to live to be more than 100, I've lived most of my life. You, you, you are immortal. But the young people I know at university and so on... Mm -hmm. and I mean, I, I know old, older people have always said this, but they're, they're not political. They're about the moment. They're about how much fun. Now, they, they Look, pretend Michael, to be it's left not wing. Just the, yeah, it's not just the youth, though. 50% of all of Ontario didn't vote. So I think that we can make uh, grander assumptions or grander, uh, we can approach this academically why people aren't voting. And the, the, the major theories within scholarship are is this that it's irrational to vote because after a cost benefit analysis, cost being 20 minutes of my day, benefit being the small little difference that my vote makes, it doesn't seem worth it. Irrational to vote. This is major scholarship. This is what this is the argument. However, there is a counter argument, which is it is rational to vote because there's a sense of duty. However, what is nurturing? What is fostering that sense of duty? What about uh, enlightened self-interest? You vote because you want the person you agree with. You're sweating, aren't you? I'm so I, hot I, right I, now. I'm, These are hot. Am the I making you nervous? Sun, no, the ladies of Sun TV wear sleeveless shirts because of the fact that it's hot in I'm the studios. I'm not sweating, and I'm overweight, and I'm a man, and I'm fine. Is it me? I'm all hip underneath it's me, here as well. It? Oh, my God. I have this effect on young women. There, it's, it's fear. So, um, but, you know, the, the young people I know, though, are... I mean, they are... When they do speak their minds, and there's not a great deal to speak, but when they do, they're, they're on the left. Yes. Because, like... Classes, uh, there's, there's a lecture going on, and lecturer, you know, brave lecturer being paid lots of public money will say, yeah, like, you know, the God and, and a Fox TV and George Bush, and they all laugh because that's what they think they have to do. Mm -hmm. But I don't actually think they are particularly left wing. They think they're supposed to be. Uh, yes, I think that we've destabilized most sources of authority, um, or at least something's happened where, where sources of authority have been destabilized among youth consciousness, mm. whether it be God, whether it be parents, and the state's doing a great job of robbing parents of many of their rights within this province alone. Whether it be politicians, there is a sense of apathy, a disconnect. Youth are not integrated in the market. I mean, half the youth don't even know where they're supposed to vote. Is it in their permanent residence or, their, or the residence where they study? We are generally uninformed. And the question is, is it because we're cynical of our options or is it because we are apathetic because we are postmodern children? But there will be an occupation of, of Bay Street and other major urban centres oh, in Canada. And if it replicates in any way, and I'm sure it will, the Wall Street uh, 
uh, scenario, you will see lots and lots of young people who claim they really understand because they're young. Are they hypocrites or just stupid? I don't want to say that they're stupid. They're exercising their right of freedom of assembly and yada, yada, yada. However, they've really not come up with even, I mean, one point over which they can all agree that this is what we are fighting for. And I mean, even let's say that 100,000 people show up mm. to this protest. There are 3 million eligible young voters in this country. I mean, Rick Mercer made a joke that if there are no, more... No, I don't believe that. No, uh, <laughs> If there are more than five, um, if there were five lesbian Inuit women in none of it, you can bet your bottom dollar, dollar that a political party would be targeting that group. Where, where, where's the targeting to the youth besides McGinty's uh, 30% tax or a 30% cut in tuition? Where he's going to get the money to do that without taxing us more, mm. I don't know. However, it, it's, it's conventional political wisdom not to target the youth vote because, well, guess what? We don't do it. It's smart politics not to target us. I did a radio show with Rick Mercer the other day. Oh, did you? And I he's think funny. Yeah, he's a very nice guy. I think he's a bit wary of me, though, because I had made a couple of comments he probably didn't approve of. And when I went in, I could tell. But I asked him for an autograph for my, my daughter's uh, best friend, and he was very obliging. Very, well, very, your daughter very... didn't want one? No, no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> she probably knows who he is. <laughs> We're supposed to be meeting for coffee sometime, by the way, your daughter and I. We're digressing terribly here. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, one, one last question. On this Thanksgiving, uh, the, the idea of, of Canada, I mean, right. separate Thanksgiving, all that from the States, but as a nation state, we're, we're different. Uh, pe I don't mean patriotism marching off to war or even waving a flag in particular, but do you think young people have this notion of we are a great country worth defending, we're not like other people? I'm not even sure that the older generation has that yet, to be honest, Michael. Yeah. We are at a critical moment of history where the entire globe is going under. We're in a global debt economic crisis. Canada is doing pretty well. So long as China doesn't go under, we're not going under anytime soon. So I'm of the belief that we have a unique opportunity to optimize our current position and really act like the first world primary global power that we are and stop uh, militarily no no not intellectually militarily. just stop aligning ourselves with like-minded uh, uh nations stop going through multilateral bilateral uh institutions act for our own stop consulting start informing these are our principles and start to essentially be a role model for the rest of the world because we're doing something right do you think we should declare war on denmark <laughs> not militarily although i think that we should snatch the arctic from them the Danes and the Canadians, my money's on. I think we could do that one. I think so, too. I think we could take I have a few interesting ideas. That's for another show, Michael. That will be the next show. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. Mm.